everyone, it's Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Animal Sanctuary. Welcome to Training Tuesday for June 21st, 2022. We're training with quail this week, so let's take a look at how our learners did. We're starting out with Castiel, who is usually a pretty solid learner, and he doesn't have any issues. He doesn't have any hesitation to take the quail. We did a normal training session to get him partially off of his ledge there. And then I had him pause at the target for a few seconds before delivering his reinforcer, which he took with no problem. This is Sabine, who came from Inland Reptile along with Castiel and lives right next to him in the adjacent enclosure. I wasn't quite sure where her head was, so I did a little bit of fishing. Once you know the snake's not afraid of the target, you can actually just stick it in there and see if you get a response from them. Well, I obviously knew where she was. I just wasn't sure where her head was. But once she saw the target, she started coming down from that mess of leaves to earn her reinforcer. And again, she had no problem taking and eating the quail. This is Worf. He's another Morelia Bredley. And these Bredley, I believe, have all eaten quail before. I do intermix quail into my training and feeding regimen along with rodents which include mice and rats and i also feed chicks every now and then reptilinx and for those snakes that eat it fish so i don't think i've ever had a morelia bradley not want quail they all eat anything i've offered them pretty eagerly and wharf is no exception this is shepherd another morelia bradley this one came from ralph polinski who I have several Morelia Bredley from. And I'm asking Shepard to come over his enclosure threshold and down towards his ledge. Now this is a mag naturals ledge that when his door is shut, this is a front opening door that flips down. The hinges are on the bottom. So the ledge is twofold. It's a ledge within his enclosure when the door is closed. And then it's also a ledge when I open the door, it gives him a platform to come out onto. I'm not asking him to come out onto the ledge during this training session. I'm just asking him to move towards it. I'm only moving it slightly. And when he gets close to the ledge, I'm gonna go ahead and signal him that that's the end of the behavior by changing the orientation of the target to completely horizontal and stationing it next to the ledge. Again, he has no problem taking the quail either. This is Katesh. She is another Morelia Bradley from Ralph Polinski at Midwest Serpentarium. I believe she was sleeping and I woke her up. She gave a little head jerk when I first put the target up there and then a couple of little head twitches. I think it took her a few seconds to realize what was going on and then she slowly starts moving towards the target. So. I figured since I think I just woke her up, I wasn't gonna demand too much from her during this training session. I just made sure that she was clearly orienting and moving towards the target. And then I offered her the reinforcer, which is of course, again, quail. She has no problem snatching that right up. This is a corn snake. This is Talon. He came from Rad Reptiles. He was eagerly waiting. Sometimes he does that when he sees me feeding other snakes. And he, again, has no problem taking the quail. This corn snake has actually eaten every type of food I've offered him. This is Spock, another one of our Morelia Bradley. He is usually up very high, and I wasn't exactly sure where he was, but that's the area he usually is in, so I just stuck the target up there. And he emerged within just a few seconds, came right down to the target like he's supposed to, and snatched up his quail as reinforcement. This is my jungle carpet python, Vedra. And Vedra had been out for a few hours and was kind of slow to engage with the target. She does engage with the target much more quickly when I'm getting her out of her enclosure, but not so much when she's already out. And she has eaten quail before. She doesn't like rats, but she'll eat mice, quail, and chicks. So I'm not sure why it took her so long to grab that quail today, but when she ate this quail, she actually got back into an ambush position in that same spot and she stayed there for about six hours before she moved. That quail was so large, I wasn't going to give her a second one. This is another Morelia Bradley Bellana. This is actually Worf's sister. 
And something I want you to watch here is she was engaging with the target. She was moving towards the target with the front of her body. But you can't really tell because the glass doors are blocking you. But she had the lower half of her body solidly anchored around her tree branch. And it was not moving. It was not loosening. And so even though I was asking her to come towards the enclosure threshold, and she was doing that with her head in the front half of her body, I could see that the lower half of her body was not budging. And there was no way she was moving out any further than that. She is very attached to that tree and that thick branch, both literative, literally and figuratively. And I just knew that she wasn't going to come any further. So I went ahead and gave her the reinforcement, which she took very eagerly. Here is Worf. I did a second session with Worf because his first quail seemed really, really tiny for his age and size. And he got right back into ambush position after he ate it. So I went ahead and did a second training session with him and offered him a second quail, which he, of course, had no problem taking immediately. This is our super dwarf reticulated python rider who practically lives in this tree. And again, he was either sleeping or just not looking in my direction. I didn't know where his head was. It blends in with his body. But you could see as soon as he saw the target and perceived it, he moved right in its direction and he had no problem taking the quail. Super dwarfs are another species in my experience that pretty much eat anything I've ever offered them. This is Sangral. He's a rough-scaled python, Morelia carinata, moves right towards his target, and he's eaten quail before, but just like Vedra, for some reason, once I presented the reinforcer, it took him a while to decide that he was going to eat that. And so I'm not sure if that is the smell, the taste, or whatever sensory input he's getting from his chemosensory perception from the tongue flicks, from his nares, whatever. He did eventually take it and he ate it with no problem. Now let's see a king snake. This is Grogu, one of our young California king snakes. He was down there moving around and I didn't realize until about this point that he's in blue, but he had already started coming up towards the target. But since he was in blue and I could see his eyes were cloudy, I didn't make him go very far. And I offered the food, which he took right away. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and that it was interesting for you not only to see the individual snakes during their training sessions, but also to see that we have a variety of species that eat things other than rodents. We do have some other species that eat quail, including our Escalapian snake or Korean rat snake, my inland carpet pythons, many of our corn snakes, you're probably wondering, well, what about your royal pythons? If you want to know if our royal pythons eat quail or not, tune in for Royals at the Ranch on Thursday, June 30th, 2022, because that is what that episode is all about. Until next time, everybody, please remember to always be kind and love your animals. <laughs>